51 students who submitted the ELA attendance from yesterday. Uh, that's great to see, right about on par with where we've been most of the week. Hopefully we'll see the same number today. And um, we only had 26 out of 51 students who submitted the Decades Project form for social studies. So those email reminders will go out, um, obviously, you know, we're, we want to make sure that people are choosing their decades and are ready to work because this is really kind of the final project for that class. And we had about half of the people who didn't turn it in yet. So if you were just taking the day to try and figure out if you were going to work with a partner to look into some of your decades, you know, especially you could talk to your parents or older siblings who lived through some of the earlier decades, um, that's totally fine. But just try to make sure that you get your decade chosen and everything squared away by next week just because next week is kind of meant to be your research week your your prep week and then the week after is meant to be when you are actually creating your slides or posts or whatever it is so we just don't want people to get too far behind in terms of the decades project for social studies because like i said that is really our last project um, and then some of you might notice I don't have the chapter eight slide number up. That's because uh, only two people actually did it yesterday, which is fine. I mean, we, you know, I uh, assigned the additional work. It is truly optional. Um, and just I wanted to throw out there that if there were people who were wanting to do that assignment, but were just confused or just had questions, please email me and I'm will be happy to um, answer them for you because I know it is a different assignment than what we've done before. Um, but they're just, uh, I feel like we usually get a few more people. Um, so I just wanted to throw that out there. But if no one is wanting to do it, uh, then that's totally all right. And just thank you to the to the two people who did. So then for our class plan today should be a, a pretty short e-learning video, which I'm sure all of you are okay with. Um, but, you know, then you can get outside, enjoy some of this nice weather we're having, celebrate the fact that it is May, it's the last month of the school year, and we're getting closer to the summertime and hopefully getting closer to the end of our shelter in place. So we will go over our Google form for today. We'll talk about the two allegory chart sections that were homework yesterday. It is Friday, which means it's genius hour day. So just a quick reminder for that. And then there is an optional Kahoot running for Unit 11 vocab until 10 o'clock tomorrow morning for anybody who would like to take advantage of that. And then we will just be um, reviewing the Decades Project. I shared out a video that a group of students in my class last year had created. Um, so I put that out there just as kind of like a guiding example of what quality work looks like for anybody who would like to use that, but the expectations are a little different. So then uh, for yesterday's journal highlights, you were asked to list three people who you would want to have with you in the event of, an, of a zombie apocalypse. Uh, we had a number of people who wrote names of parents, siblings, family members, and friends which was great. Um, I didn't go with any of those, but just so you all are aware, there were a number of eighth grade students who named fellow eighth graders that they would want, um, which I thought was nice, just that you'd want to be with each other in the event that we were facing a zombie apocalypse. Uh, some other groups we had, Jennifer Lawrence, Chuck Norris, and Bear Grylls, I thought was a very interesting group. Um, obviously, you know, no zombie is going to be able to stand up to Chuck Norris and then Bear Grylls can get you through a lot of different things. Uh, we also had a number of people who went with characters from The Walking Dead, which I thought was kind of funny, either the characters or the actors who have played them. So, for example, Rick and Carl Grimes and then Daryl Dixon was one. Um, down at the bottom here, Stephen Young, Norman Reedus, and Andrew Lincoln. Those are the actors who play some of the main characters on The Walking Dead. And then another group we had was Zach Heron, Tom Holland, and John Krasinski. And then here was another set. Um, you can see The Rock, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and then this student wanted his pit bull to come along. 
I thought that was kind of a funny, you know, you, I don't know how much more intimidating you could get than uh, The Rock, and then especially if you got Arnold in his prime. Um, we also had The Rock showing up with Chris Hemsworth and then Michael Jordan. I'm assuming that was just for the athleticism aspect. He can probably outrun or, or jump over a lot of zombies. Uh, Timothy Chalamet, Harry Styles, and Tom Holland, and then Jackie Chan, John Cena, and Gal Gadot. I just, again, I thought these were some pretty funny, interesting groupings to think about. And so those were some of our journal highlights from yesterday. So then for today... Um, just a reminder, I'll be going off over the allegory chart sections for Minimus and Mr. Frederick, and um, that it's Genius Hour. Like I said, there's an optional Kahoot running. The link is there. It was also sent in Google Classroom. And then our attendance response for today is a little bit different than the ones that we've had the rest of the week. It's still looking at up to three people, but you don't need to list three people. You can stop at one or two if you want. But this is asking you what celebrities, athletes, characters, etc., do you see as being most like yourself? So I'm asking for people in that, in those different spheres. So I don't want you to name some of your best friends, family members. Obviously, I'm sure that there are similar characteristics between yourself and your closest friends, your older brothers and sisters, etc. This is looking more into what movie characters or TV characters, what celebrities, athletes, musicians, whoever, do you see as being similar to you and why? So you can list up to three, um, but if there's like one or two who you just consider to be your spirit animals, then you can just go with them and, and uh, explain why. So that is the journal prompt for today. Um, again, I'll be very interested to see what people have to say because I feel like these could be some pretty entertaining responses. All right, so now if we move over to the allegory chart for Animal Farm, I'll pause. I have some coffee here and let you all open yours up if you're following along live. Um, and so the two people that we that I asked you to complete the allegory chart for yesterday were Minimus and Mr. Frederick. Minimus is one that I kind of previewed when we were talking about Squealer and that he and Squealer combined to represent propaganda and the Russian press. So um, I mentioned again that Stalin was in control of the press and propaganda when he was in power and that the materials that they created, the articles that were done, were meant to make him appear as a great and admirable leader. And then I just mentioned that Minimus is a pig who's gifted at creating songs and poems, and he's always writing about Napoleon and his greatness. And uh, chapter eight is the one where we see a song specifically created, I believe it was chapter eight, um, about Napoleon that is then written on the uh, barn or painted on the barn, I guess. And just mention the fact that Joseph Stalin, when he was in power, had his own name put into the Russian National Anthem. There was the city of Stalingrad, which was named after him. And so we can see some similarities there to the song that Minimus composes about how great comrade Napoleon is. All right, so Minimus and Squealer, very similar. And then scrolling down to Mr. Frederick, he is one, uh, his allegory, he represents Adolf Hitler. So Hitler was the dictator of Germany during Stalin's time, or at least the beginning of Stalin's time, just as Frederick was the farmer at Pinchfield during the rise of Napoleon. Um, a lot of you probably remember that Hitler and Stalin entered into the non-aggression pact during the early stages of World War II, where they agreed not to attack each other, but to take their own separate spheres of influence. And then Hitler would later break this pact and stab Stalin in the back by invading the Soviet Union. And this is very similar to when Farmer Frederick breaks the timber agreement by paying in fake money and then attacks animal farms. So uh, some of you probably remember as well that Frederick is described as being a very harsh farmer. Uh, there are rumors about him mistreating his animals, that he is you know, drives hard bargains, but that his farm is very, you know, 
managed in a what sounds like a totalitarian way, which is exactly how Hitler ruled Germany. So Mr. Frederick is an allegory for Adolf Hitler and the fact that he and his men attacked Animal Farm in Chapter 8 should just serve to reinforce that allegory. So that is the uh, allegory chart connection for Animal Farm for Chapter 8 or the connections. Um, as I said, there is a Kahoot running for Unit 11 for those of you who would like to take advantage of it. It's running until 10 o'clock tomorrow. Uh, so the link again is in Google Classroom. It's on the form that I sent out. And then here, if you're going to Kahoot to play, the pin is right here on the screen as well. So uh, I want to say we had about 15 or 16 people who took advantage of the quizzes earlier in the week. Hopefully we get about the same amount for the Kahoot today. All right. Uh, other than that, like I said, it's Genius Hour Day in Language Arts. So just use your work time to continue on that. Uh, we are into our last month of the school year here. So just make sure that we're plugging along to get those projects completed by the end of the year. We have about, I think it's two and a half weeks left. Once we finish with Animal Farm, most of your class time will be dedicated to finishing your Genius Hour. So there will be one or two small wrap-up assignments with Animal Farm, but mostly the last week or so of classes will be Genius Hour uh, just to give all of you an idea of how much time, how much work time is left. Um, because Genius Hour normally is the last thing that we do in language arts, and so especially with the e-learning, um, it's really kind of like your quote-unquote final project. All right, so now let's transition over to social studies. Um, yesterday, we sent out the Decades Project, where you are looking at one of the decades that remained after we finished up with the Civil Rights Movement, so from the 70s all the way until the 2010s, um, looking at the important events, people, politics, inventions and in tech, and culture of that time. We talked yesterday about some ways you could expand the information. You could break culture into more specific areas like music, entertainment, and fashion. Um, you could do profiles on an important person or an important event, single slides on each. And then here on the second page were just some questions for you to think about while you're doing your research. So um, I had also sent out a Google Sheet which I know I had talked about briefly yesterday that just had some ideas for things you could look into in the different areas based on your decade that you chose. So you can see the decades here on the left. You have important events, people, all the way through. So again, just this can be your jumping off point. You do not need to feel like you have to, to look into these specific people or all of these people, you can look into different inventions, different you know, musicians, however you want. Um, these are just ones who are kind of accepted as the main events, you know, fashion styles, values, et cetera, of this time. But make these projects your own um, because that's what we want you to do. So I also shared out a video that is right here. Um, from a group of students that I had last year who did their decades project on the 80s. And this again is just meant to be a model for you. Um, you can watch all of it, you can watch some of it. Remember that because we're doing e-learning, we're doing distance learning, you are not expected to have this much information. This is meant to show an example of above and beyond work. Um, but it is just a good model, I think, to show some expectations, to include pictures, some different fonts, text, all that kind of stuff. Um, this was just a really well done presentation that was made into a video, which is why I wanted to share it for all of you as an example. So again, you can watch it. You don't have to. I just wanted to put that out there as another resource for you. All right, and then finally, before I sign off for the weekend, um, hopefully all of you saw that in Google Classroom, I also shared out this form asking about eighth grade promotion. 
uh, because obviously with the shelter in place requirements, our promotion ceremony has been canceled, but the school board and the administration still wanted to give you the option and hear your thoughts on what you would like to do with the tradition of promotion to high school. So the two options that are given, would you rather just postpone the ceremony and hope that some sort of actual in-person promotion ceremony will be allowed in either June or July? Or would you rather hold a virtual promotion where you know the valedictorian and salutatorian would get to record speeches we would give out some awards and just you know hear all the names called and then any suggestions that you might have as well so uh, mr simpson had emailed this out i figured that the social studies classroom was the easiest way to get it to everyone and we would like you to have your feedback submitted by wednesday which is may 6th i believe so you know, you don't have to answer it first thing today, but please, if you would like to have your suggestions known or your feelings known, this is your opportunity to fill it out. You can talk to your parents, your friends, decide what you think would be the best way to go. Because again, this is your ceremony and, uh, and we want to hear from you. So um, other than that, like I said, language arts, genius hour day. The optional Kahoot is running until 10 a.m. tomorrow. And then social studies, just keep on keeping on with that decades project. Any questions that you have, please, please, please email myself, Mr. Roush, Mrs. Watson, and uh, we will be happy to do what we can to help you. All right. Otherwise, um, it is Friday, so I'm signing off for the weekend. I hope everyone has a great long weekend. It's looking like we're going to have some nice weather, so get outside, go for a walk or a skate, rollerblade, whatever. Um, you know, hang out with your family, play some games. Just, just have a good long weekend. And uh, I'll be back next week for our streams for that. All right, we're getting very close to the end of the year. I know that some of you, this is probably starting to wear on you, the e-learning. And again, I just wanted to say how proud I am of the work that that everyone is doing and that um, I'm also very appreciative of the number of people for the most part who are looking not only to do what's expected, but to go above and beyond. And I, I think that that's really admirable and just want you to know that myself and your other teachers are proud of you and, and we're thinking about you even though we don't get to see you in person. So um, that being said, everyone have a safe and healthy weekend and I will see you all on Monday.